today. Uh, the focus today is going to be, of course, we'll share a little bit about Lone Pal. It's always nice to make an introduction for those of you who don't know who we are and who I am. My name is Chris Kennedy, Director of Business Development for Lone Pal. Um, I'll share a little bit more about our company in just a few moments. Uh, I want to cover today how to best leverage technology to connect with a customer. Just like you and I are connecting here today, um, I want you to be able to understand how those connection points can still happen and occur uh, with customers remotely, how we did it successfully um, as a business organization and multiple organizations. And then um, I also want to talk a little bit about some things that are super helpful for you as solar sales professionals to ensure that the process of selling remotely isn't different. Um, well, it is different, but it doesn't have a different result than when you're actually physically face to face with somebody. So that's the goal today. We're going to discuss a little bit about remote system design, utility uh, problem, the solar solution. And then of course, I have my wonderful colleague, uh, the talented Leandra, who's going to come on the line a little bit later and talk with you about the direct pay program and the relationship that Lone Pal and Sologen have. Um, if you're unfamiliar with Lone Pal, uh, I'd like just to give you a little bit of brief history. So we're a world positive, clean energy lender. We've been in business and founded since 2003. The fastest growing solar lender in the nation. We have a full service um, consumer finance bank and pl banking platform. And we also have a full service mortgage banking company, both critical parts of the Lone Pal business. Uh, we've got about $29 billion in cumulative funded loan volume and over 150,000 happy customers. Um, I share that with you just so you know we're not practicing on your customers. Um, in 2019, we helped to facilitate about 280 um, megawatts of residential solar installation operating in all 15 states. Now, one of the things that's unique about Lone Pal in terms of uh, in terms of a financer is everybody here on the business development team at the executive level, um, all the way down to our partner relations managers have all worked in the solar industry in the past. So it's not just a solar financing company. We weren't just a bunch of folks who worked at a big bank and were trying to figure out how we could slip into the uh, solar financing segment and make more money off of the American public. What we're really looking to do was tweak, tailor, and customize a program for solar sales professionals built by solar sales professionals to create a frictionless process for the um, customer, a frictionless process for the sales professional, and we wanted to make sure that installers and their partners got paid quickly. So that's a little bit of Lone Pal background and history. Um, there's been a couple of times that we've built, grown, and scaled large inside sale call center models using web technology and communication. At our peak uh, we were converting a home from utility power over to solar power at a clip of under um, about every it says 23 seconds. So I'll just read what's on the slide. And we did it using 100% web-based communications, just like you and I are doing today. So let's talk about how we were able to do that. And I think we'll use an old analogy here. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. If we consider that one of the most important things that you can do for yourself and for your customer is be appropriately prepared for the phone consultation, just like you would be for a consultation that you were having um, with, a, uh, with a homeowner face-to-face, -face, and the time investment is about the same, I think you'll really find um, that these programs, the way that you can sell virtually, will be equally as poignant and beneficial as it would be if you were going and driving to the customer's house. As a matter of fact, I have multiple examples of folks who have implemented the strategies that we're gonna talk about today, and they've doubled their business because they're no longer spending windshield time driving you know, hours per week and month over to customers' homes. It's able to help them uh, increase the number of appointments that they're able to do on a day-to-day -day basis, and it's led to a tremendous amount of success. So I hope that I can share some of those similar tricks and tips with you, uh, and you will be able to help grow and double your business like some of our successful, um, our successful partners that I'm calling out right now. So let's talk a little bit about the preparation. Uh, first of all, preparation, obviously, in a consultation is gonna be critical. There's some things that you need to do ahead of time to set yourself up for success. So let's just talk about what those things are. 
Uh, if you're using a technology like Zoom or you're using um, any type of really technology where you're, you're having a camera and you're going to be sharing your screen, make sure that the first portion of the consultation isn't spent with you trying to troubleshoot IT issues. So my suggestion on this is craft an email where you send out ahead of time to the customer anything that they're going to need to download. So if they're going to be on Zoom, you know this already. If they're using a touchscreen device, they're going to need to download the app. If they're using a desktop computer, all they need to do is click on the application and run it, but it can take a couple minutes. So if you want to avoid that awkward beginning portion of the conversation where you're trying to combat technology issues, you can do that simply by building out a nice email template, sending it to the customer prior to the meeting with them so that they understand exactly what they need to do in order to be appropriately prepared for the meeting. So part of your preparation is going to be preparing your customer. The other thing is there's nothing more annoying um, and nothing less respectful in my mind than not being engaged in the conversation that you're having with a homeowner, but expecting their engagement. So here's what I would suggest. Make sure that your phone, even if it's on your desk, is turned upside down and it's on silent. Close your email applications. Close everything that's going to be a distraction to you so that you can focus in on the conversation at hand. If you do this, it's going to help the customer to understand that you're fully engaged and usually they'll follow suit um, and then set up your tech ahead of time. So if there are websites that you're going to be pulling up, if there are, um, if there are uh, you know, satellite images that you want to pull up, if there is paperwork that you need to pull up, anything that you can think of that you're going to need to have a conversation on with the customer, just prepare yourself in advance and have those websites or have that technology loaded up already as you go in the conversation so you can just quickly grab it and pull it into their view on the screen you don't want to spend time being like oh i, I had this pulled up earlier uh, uh, sorry i'm apologize this doesn't work it throw it throws you off it throws the customer off it sets you up so that you're on your heels we want to be well balanced and positioned in these consultations and conversations with our homeowners to prepare to walk them through the next steps and if we're not prepared how can we prepare our customers to walk through those next steps the other thing is background noise so you guys are going to hear a beautiful baritone voice in the background while you're talking to me today or while we're talking together today um, no worries that's just dustin mansell i've been working with the guy for the past 10 years he is one of the best solar professionals that you will ever find um, he's just super loud so he's about 12 feet away from me right now if you hear his voice in the background no worries it's just dustin so just like i said expectations with you right now if you're going to be working from home and if you're in a situation like bill susie where you have a small farm that you're taking care of let the customer know hey you might hear the horse neighing in the background you could hear the roosters crowing right or you could say i've got children or dogs or something like that where you have hey there's going to be a little bit of background noise i'm going to try to minimize it and go into a room where you and i can really connect together but i just want to let you know like i've got four kids at home one of them may run in the room right now i don't have a lock on the door so just a heads up if you hear a child's voice that's just my family i'm happy to introduce them to you it helps to humanize you a little bit when things like that pop up but it's also good for you to set expectations with the customers so that it's not a distraction for them they know to expect it the other thing is tidy up your work surroundings so Nobody wants to see the past 14 meals that you've had from you know, Chick-fil-A and Carl's Jr. in your background. I don't want to see all the cups of sweet tea that you've gotten from McDonald's. I don't want to see the stacks of things that you have on your desk and neither does your customer. So if you're going to be in an area where you're having a conversation with your customer, just like you and I are today, you can do a couple of things. One of the cool things that you can do is you can set up a Zoom virtual background. Now the Zoom virtual background that you can establish is like the one that I have today. This isn't my real background, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not in a work, uh, what do they call it? Um, what's it called? It's like a work workspace. Ah, whatever, I forgot. It's one of those shared workspaces. I'm actually here. I'm in the office right now. There's Dustin, who I was talking about before. I didn't want you to see him before, so you know what I did? I got an HD camera, and I went online, and I downloaded a couple of different images that I was comfortable with my customer seeing. I'll share a few with you right now. 
I'm not in a prison, I promise, right? I wish I could get back to the gym. I really wish I could get back to the gym right now. All of these things that you're doing, there's a good way for you to not expose what's actually in your work background, but it's also a really good conversation starter for the customers. And you're gonna need some conversation starters and ways to build rapport with customers because you're not right in front of them. Set yourself up for success in that way. Let's go back to the office and continue to work. Um, and then last but not least, you gotta be an expert in the utility companies and rate plans that are available to your customers currently and then post solar. So those are all things you need to do to prepare yourself just for the phone consultation in advance. Let's talk a little bit about just building rapport because this is one of the most common things that I've gotten feedback on from my customers, right? Like from our solar sales professionals that like, hey, Chris, I'm just not able to connect with somebody um, like I am in person. Well, that makes sense. You, you aren't able to connect the same way. So let's talk about ways that you can keep the same connection points, but they just occur a little bit differently than they would if we were all face to face together. Um, first things first, listen. Now I can tell that everybody on this call is muted right now, right? So everybody on this call is muted. There's nothing that I have to listen to in the background, but let's say for an example, I hear something in the background. Like it sounds like everybody knows what it sounds like just by a show in the chat window. Let's get a little bit of engagement here. Who's ever been on the phone with somebody trying to get something done and they're driving and you can tell they're driving. Just give me a yes in the chat window. A yes here, anything like that. Give me an affirmative in the chat window if you've ever uh, had that happen to you. Or somebody's driving, you're trying to get something accomplished and you can tell they're driving, right? Right, we've all had that happen. Um, who's ever been on a call with somebody and like you're on, a, on the phone with them and then the doorbell rings and the dog starts going crazy, right? Who's ever experienced that? Has ever done it? Like, when my dog starts going crazy at the front door, there's nothing on this planet that is more annoying to me as the person whose dog is barking. I don't know how the other person on the other end of the line feels when I'm on the phone, but I know it's super embarrassing for me. And then you have that conversation with your dog that you, nobody wants to hear, right? You have that conversation with your dog like, stop it, be quiet. Like, it's okay, it's just a dog, it's just a door. It's just a doorbell. Make sure that you stay calm. If your customer goes through that experience, they're probably feeling some tension. They're probably feeling a little bit of nervousness and they're probably feeling the need to make that dog be quiet as well. Um, humanize yourself and share those experiences that you have with the customer. So the reason I brought those two up is those are things that can be super distracting, but they're also things that can put your customer in a position where they're not able to take action because something takes their attention away from you. So what I want you all to remember to do is to listen for cues like that. Listen for those cues that are gonna take a customer from focused in directly on you and your conversation to having to refocus their attention somewhere else. If they have to refocus that attention somewhere else, it's critically important that you be consider it and give them the time to go take care of what they need to do and come back to you. It's not a bailout. Don't pull the parachute every time you hear somebody cooking in the kitchen. Snap them back to you. If you hear water running, pots banging around in the background, listen for that and say, hey, what's for dinner, right? What you cooking? If that's what you hear, if you hear pets barking or you hear kids come into the room and those kids are talking in the background and you're not able to focus, just give your customer a little bit of a break and say something like this. Hey, it sounds like the kids or the dog or the cat or in Bill Susie's case, the elephant is trying to get your attention right now. It sounds like somebody's trying to get your attention. Or something's trying to get your attention right now. Do you want to pay them attention for a couple of minutes? I'll go ahead. I'll be right here. And you come back to me in just a couple of minutes after you've gotten that taken care of. I really want to focus in on what's important in this conversation. All right. If their kids are trying to talk to them and their kids are screaming in the background and you have four kids like me, I can focus in on you and have a conversation with you and tune those children out. See if your customer can do the same thing before you just automatically say, hey, hey, you know what? It's, I hear the kids. Is there a better time when I can call you back? Stop it. 
Quit asking your customers if there's a better time. Yes, there's always a better time. Quit asking your customers if you caught them at a good time. No, it's never a good time to talk to you. Ask your customer to be engaged in the conversation with you. And if you've got them on the phone, be respectful, but also be assertive. You've got something that's genuinely valuable that you're trying to present to them. Make sure that you don't diminish the value of what you're trying to offer by letting a simple distraction that would take 30 seconds to correct derail the entire process. So those are just some things that you can do to help build rapport and humanize yourself. Um, you can give them a tour of your house. You can show them, hey, look at what's going on in the background here. I've got, you know, welcome to my kitchen. What, wherever you're working from today, if you're doing something remotely, take them on a tour of the office. Whatever is going to help build that rapport and humanize you a little bit more, always make sure that when you can connect, you're in front of the camera, you're looking into the camera, and that your customer has the opportunity to do the same thing. It's the reason why FaceTime is wildly popular. It's the reason why Skype is wildly popular. It's the reason why in that movie, the original one, Total Recall, it's the reason why that video call that popped up in Total Recall, we all were like, oh my gosh, this is so crazy and cool. But we like to be close to people. We thrive on interactions with different folks. Because we're thriving on those interactions, get that connectedness just a little bit closer to what it would be if you were right in front of them by having your video pulled up and ready to go. Here's another thing. Normally, I would dissuade you and advise you not to talk to customers about basement level rapport building. Basement level rapport building is common stuff like news, sports, and weather. Most of the time, it sounds like a cheesy sales tactic. It sounds like a cheesy way to find some common ground about something. Oh, do you like, uh, what do you think about those Philadelphia Flyers? Like, I don't know, I'm not a hockey fan. It sounds cheesy. But today, there's some things that are really going on um, in our world that are affecting all of us. You know, starting with COVID, to the economy and its current condition and position today to all of the other things that you know are going on right now that you probably feel passionately about in one direction, right? Share with your customer that you're aware of what's going on and ask them how the situation today is affecting them. How are they doing with the return to work programs that have been going on? How are they affected by the shelter in place policies that have been um, rampant across the United States? Um, are they safe right now? Is there anything going on in their neighborhood that they're concerned about? Like make sure that you actually humanize yourself and you connect with people on these current events that are really, um, they're really touching a lot of us in ways that normally current events don't. Um, so that, that's, that's the last I'll, I'll touch on there for, for building rapport. Um, Hopefully that gave you guys some ability to um, ability to do some things maybe a little bit differently than you're doing doing today. Um, leveraging technology to sell remote. My preferred technology, and this is not a loan pal policy. This is a Chris Kennedy policy. My preferred technology is Zoom. That's what I prefer. Uh, I've used it for years. I'm super comfortable with it. There's other technologies that you can use that do similar things to Zoom. Some of these things that you know about that I don't even know about. There's some new stuff out there. What I will say is my experience in the past has led me to tell you that Zoom and even the free version of Zoom is a far better tool for most people than the other tools that are out there just because it's fairly simple to use. Um, join.me is another one that's really, really close. If I had to pick a favorite second, it'd be join.me. Um, and then Google Hangouts is something that most folks with a Gmail account can use. There's a little bit of nuance with Google Hangouts um, in terms of making sure that, that they have a Gmail account, they can log in. Uh, they don't get necessarily access to things as quickly as, as you, you may like. Um, the screen sharing and, and the, um, the screen sharing and the uh, video technology are a little bit harder to navigate. Um, in, in Google Hangouts, but it's another one of those free technologies that if you get super proficient with it, it can help you to have everything up, ready to go, ready to rock right now. Um, let's talk a little bit about wh what you're gonna do on the screen share. Like why share the screen? Why do it in the first place? So um, you probably do this today when you're in a home, or you probably used to do this when you were in a home. But 
the bottom line is customers, even though the shelter in place um, restrictions that are mandated are starting to lift, some customers still won't feel comfortable with letting you in the home. You can offer a really good alternative to a face-to-face -face visit by leveraging this technology and still doing some of the similar things that you normally do throughout the course of your sales consultation and presentation with your customers. So I'll share with you a few examples of some things that you can do. Um, the first one is the virtual walk around. Okay. The virtual walk around is an electronic version of what you would normally do with a customer where you would literally set your bag down, leave your computer in the house, grab your notepad and say, Hey, uh, I'm going to go ahead, let's do a walk around here. I'm going to go ahead and you know, outline where the system would go. So in the past, you know, if you're with a customer and you normally would go and you look around the house, you take some pictures of the main panel, we don't want to lose that experience that creates and establishes yourself as a solar expert just because you decided that you are going to be helpful to the customer and do things using this web-based communication. The walk around is important because it helps you to understand customer preferences, get ahead of customer objections, and allows you to continue building genuine rapport and discovering what's important to the customer before you do any system design. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's actually pull some things in so that we can see an example. Um, the first thing I want to do is uh, I want to make sure that y'all can see my screen. So just to, if I could, sh uh, shout outs in the chat window. Can you all see a screen of a house that just popped up? Can everybody see that? You guys can't, everybody can see that screen? Okay, cool. So just like I did right now, the first step in this process is gonna be checking to see if the customer can see your screen. You wanna verify that you're having a conversation about something that you both can see. That creates a little bit more intimacy in the conversation, but obviously you also wanna know that they're looking at what you want them to look at. So snap them back in, say, hey, I wanted to confirm that you can see my screen. And the next part of the process is, cool, now that you can see my screen, is this your house, right? So you can see my screen. It looks like uh, your house is this really nice two-story home. You've got a long driveway. It looks like you have a pool in the backyard and, and there might be some um, a garden or some children's play equipment um, right off of that back porch. You don't want to design a system on their neighbor's house. So ensure that you're looking at the right home. It creates a little bit more of that closeness that we were just talking about right now. And it can also help you when you're talking about generating referrals. You can figure out whether or not the neighborhood's a solar neighborhood. Look at this. I like this house right here too. Got it. Show of hands or um, somebody in chat window. Do you think these guys have a pretty similar bill to these folks? Maybe, I don't know. What do you think, chat window? Do you think that they could have a pretty similar utility bill? Same neighborhood, looks like big old house, looks like a in-ground pool, could be, right? So make sure that you have the house pulled up. It allows you to continue to converse and connect. Why in the world did you choose this area? What made you really um, enjoy this? What, what, what made you move into this neighborhood? Is all this land yours? Oh my gosh, who cuts the grass, right? Those type of things allow you to continue to converse and connect with your customer and build that authentic rapport that you're looking for. Now, it also helps you because while you're doing the virtual walk around, the first thing that you're going to do is explain the best area for solar on the home. So let's go back to this home right here. Say, now really the best spot for solar on this home is on the south facing side. Would you all agree? Everybody agree? We'll just do some chat window stuff. Cool. Is agree that this southern facing exposure right here is probably the best spot for solar? Yeah, for sure. Um, cool. So you want to discuss the best spots for the solar system itself before you ask for the customer's preferences. Primarily because if your only mounting plane is like in the front of the house and that's the southern exposure and there's really nowhere else to put it, you want to explain why you're having that conversation with the customer about the best spot for solar on the home. So 
in this case, I'm going to say they've got a lot of land, right? So I'm going to say, hey, there's, there's a couple of really good spots for solar on this home. Um, now, the spot that's most common and most cost effective would be right here on this southern facing plane property and if you're open to it we also have the ability to do a, what's called a ground mounted system if it's something that you would prefer over the system mounted on your home the difference really being that it's going to cost a little bit more for the ground mount because there's a lot more work that goes into but first so you're clarifying the customer's preferences next i explained to you where the best spot is and letting you know that I'm going to clarify your, your preferences. So you can ask them questions super directly, um, or you can ask them uh, some things that are a little bit less direct. So one of the things that you can do here is like, hey, this is a great neighborhood for solar in general. Wow, it looks like everybody has a good you know, size plot of land out there. Um, how long have you lived in this neighborhood? How long have you lived in the home? Hey, from what I see, you've got a couple of good areas for solar. I also see that there's kind of this big tree on the east side of the property right here. How tall are those trees? Allows you to identify obstructions and potential shading issues. The other thing that you're gonna do, is there anywhere that you're opposed to having the solar system? Ask them in a negative connotation. Is there anywhere that you're opposed to having the solar system? Um, don't ask that question if the only spot they have for mounting is on the front of the home, but that gives you a good idea of some ways that the um, virtual walk around can be very similar. And so let's just expand on this virtual walk around just a teeny tiny bit. So if I'm looking at this, I'm going to ask the customer, first of all, where is their main electrical panel? I want to find out where that's located and everybody who's a solar sales professional understands why, because I'm going to have to connect the solar system there. Right, so where's the main panel located? Well, it turns out in this case that the main panel is actually located on this side of the property. So main panel and utility meter located right here. Can everybody see this on my screen, this Eastern side? Cool. Cool, cool, okay. Um, so the best spot for solar is gonna be right here uh, on the back side of the home. It looks like you've got a chimney right here. Uh, on the back side of the home. I can tell that by the shadow that's cast that it's larger than like a normal little roof vent would be right here. You can see the roof vent shadow. I can also see that there's a large shadow right here. It looks like they have some type of antenna on the home as well. Everybody able to see that, that large shadow that's cast? This helps you to understand what's going on on the customer's roof. You can ask questions like, oh, tell them, it looks like this is a composite shingle roof. Does that sound right? It probably feels a little bit like sandpaper when you touch it. Yeah, how long ago did you have the roof installed? Why would I ask a question like that? Why would I ask a question like, how long ago did you have the roof installed? Anybody in the chat window, hit me up. Well, I'm gonna ask that question, I'll answer for you. I'm gonna ask that question because if I need to do a re-roof, I wanna know, right? I wanna know ahead of time. I wanna be able to build that into my cost. I wanna be able to build that into my, Proposal. Yeah, Vicky, super smart. Vicky's like, hey, you got to see the integrity of the roof surface. Right? It may turn out that a ground mounted system is better right? because I don't have to do a full re roof. The last time I replaced the roof was about 15 years ago. Yeah, we had a really bad hailstorm. Uh, it's about 15 years ago we had the roof replaced. It was one of those 20 year, you know, um, insurance jobs. Cool. I don't know. Maybe I do want to um, say, hey, you know what we have the ability to do uh, with my company specifically. We have the ability to not only upgrade your home to a solar home, but we have the ability to, um, during that point in time, look at re-roofing the surface of, um, or re-roofing your home as well, uh, so that you can have a brand new roof and a brand new electrical system and set up. Um, is that something that you'd be interested in? You guys get it. It's the, the whole reason behind this is you gotta have the conversation up front. You need to clarify customer preferences. You want to make sure that you're genuinely conversing and connecting with the customer and you want to identify the best spots for solar. So those five things that we were looking at before still stay the same no matter what. We walked through that demonstration pretty quickly, but hopefully that gives you an idea of what the conversations could sound like. A little bit of an abbreviated version, but gives you a good idea. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to jump into utility bill discovery. So by a show of folks in the chat window, who gets a utility bill ahead of time for every single consultation, no matter what? 
just give me a yes, yes in the chat window if you're always getting a utility bill from your homeowner uh, whenever possible. Nobody? All right. Nobody's in? All right, well, you should. So here's why you should. So utility bill discovery is super important for a number of reasons, but the real reason that it's important is your customer doesn't necessarily understand there's a problem. My most commonly quoted saying is nobody cares about your solution to a problem they don't have. Nobody cares about your solution to a problem they don't have. So in order for your solution to make sense, you've got to first identify that there's a problem in the way that they're doing business today. And the problem is the way that they're buying their power. The way they're buying their power today is antiquated. It's old. It's literally sticks and wires. They don't probably understand how they're built. They don't understand the different rate schedules that are out and available to them. They don't understand that the utility companies have constantly and consistently been pressuring, pressuring the rate payers to increase the overall costs of the electricity so they pay more and more every single year. You wanna make sure that your customer understands the problem before you present the solar solution right cement it in with your customer and you do that by getting a utility bill ahead of time and explaining specifically to the customer why this is such an issue right why the utility companies are are um, not the best way to purchase power why it's not the best way because you're replacing a utility bill that's anyway money i have a bill for electricity today i have to pay that if i want electricity i am going to instead of having a utility bill that pays for the utility company's assets, their grid, their power line, their substations, their transformers, their power generation plants, their trucks, their offices and the paintings in them, I'm gonna start contributing towards an asset that's on my home. And I'm gonna start investing in an asset that's on my home that replaces that money that I was gonna spend with the utility company anyway. Right, it's anyway money. Go through the customer's um, utility bill with them. I'm gonna do a super brief, um, I'll do a super brief version of this with you right now. Uh, this is Pacific Gas and Electric. It is a, a utility company in um, California. I'm gonna go over, like I said, very briefly, um, what we would normally do with a customer. So the first thing that you would normally do with a customer is make sure that you know, their name and address are on the bill. Great, do you understand how you're billed, Mr. and Mrs. Customer? Nope, nobody's ever walked me through it before. Cool, let me walk you through it. This little chart here really is a reflection of how much money you've been paying every single month for the utility company. But you pay that money because of um, the amount of power that you use in the home. So what we really wanna do is we wanna figure out how much power you're using and what you're paying for it so that I can show you what the financial benefits would be to upgrading your home to solar power. Really simple, easy way that helps the customer to understand why you're going to ask them for their utility bill. Now, as you're going through this, oopsies, as you're going through this with them, there's another part that's going to come up, right? The other part that's going to come up is cool. Well, how are you actually billed? Most folks have never looked at or gotten a breakdown from a solar professional of how they're actually billed for power. So this is what you're gonna do with them. You're gonna walk them through. So most people just you know, get a power bill and they pay it. When you receive your power bill, do you actually look at it in detail? Or do you just pay it because you have to? Cool. Um, let's, we're gonna, we'll build some pain here too. What's the highest bill you've ever paid? Is there ever a time of year where you really just dread like opening up and looking at your utility bill? Who usually pays a utility bill? Make sure you're talking to the right person. Go in and give them a breakdown right now. Cool. So utility, the utility bill is actually broken down in several different areas. So we're going to have generation, which is actually producing yeah, the power, transmissions, which it 
uh, what it takes to get it from the different substations and the distribution. Those are the sticks and wires that you see out there, the lines and poles that you see people constantly having to maintain and repair from the utility company. But there's other programs that are built into here, uh, into your costs and other things that you're paying for that you may not have known. First of all, did you know you're paying for public pur purpose programs? Cool, like what? Well, it'll give you a breakdown of what those public purpose <laughs> having trouble with that word, of what those uh, public purpose programs are, right? So it's for low income customers, it's for energy efficiency programs, it's for research and development like R&D. You're already paying for other people um, who aren't necessarily, um, who, who don't necessarily have the same financial means that you do. Did you know you're paying to decommission a nuclear power plant? How about water? Did you know you're paying a water bond charge? What about this? Competition, competition is the one that makes people the most upset. So competition, competition transition charges are charges that the utility company enforces on their current rate payers because more and more of their customers are choosing to do what you and I are talking about today, which is upgrade their homes to solar power. And the utility company is like, oh, since more customers are choosing to go um, upgrade their homes to renewable energy and, and purchasing solar systems, we're just going to pass on the, the money that we used to make that we're losing because they're converting their homes over to solar power to our existing customers. Literally what's happening. Literally, that's what's going on. Um, don't worry, they gave you 78 cents for energy cost recovery and they gave you a little bit of money back um, a couple times a year for being conservative with your, your use. Uh, there's some taxes that are on there as well. If nobody's gotten a breakdown of that before, you're gonna provide them with an extreme amount of value. This is probably gonna be one or two of your, or either your first or second trial close. If I could get you as far away from a program like this, what you're currently doing today as possible, is that something that you would do? If you had the choice to get as far away and gain more independence from the utility company and the way that they are charging you for power today, is that something that's attractive to you? Just a little trial close to see. And you're gonna remind them of that trial close when you go in and introduce the solution and talk about what it is. So you talk about the problem before you present the solution. We did that by beating the bill up a little bit. You may wanna also have something like a credible website. Like many people talk to me on a regular basis about the following. They talk to me about, hey, you know, I, I Pacific Gas and Electric, man, they're, they're a hard company to do business with. Well, keep this in mind. It's a company that you don't want to do business with that's constantly coming to you with their palm up. Now, these folks here are asking you to pay more money for the same power that you purchased from them last year. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure a thousand million dollars is a billion dollars. They're asking for a billion dollars, which equates to a 12% increase in your costs. If you could avoid this 12% increase that they're proposing to charge to you, is that something that you would do? Why am I doing this? We're having this conversation because we wanna make sure that the customer is aware of the problem. You've got a credible website that was prepared and ready to go. This is a .gov website. You know, this isn't like, like this isn't the National Enquirer talking about things that may or may not be true. This is the Public Utilities Commission telling you what's happening. Okay, so those are some of the things that you can do to help identify the problem. We call it beating up the bill. We beat the bill up. In order to beat the bill up, you need to get it. In order to get it, you gotta have it in your hot hand before the customer, or before you're in the home with the customer. Um, or you got, if you get it while you're with the customer, you need to take the time to go over it with them and they can send it to you in advance. So those are just some ways that you can set it up. After you've gone through this process, after you've walked through this process with them, then you're gonna talk about the solution, okay? So you've gone through this entire process with them and, and then this is where there's sort of a fork in the road. It's can you do the design while you're in the home can you do the design on this call or do you set up an appointment as close to this phone conversation as possible within 24 hours? Absolutely. But as close to this phone conversation as possible, can you set up another consultation where you can bring all of the parties who are interested in what this is going to do for their home and get them involved so you don't have to share it with um, 
uh, one part of the couple and then the other part of the couple and then the uncle who wants to hear about it before they make any you know, choices to do this. Get everybody involved in the beginning. If you have everybody involved in the beginning and you set the good expectations there, you're not going to have the uncle who comes in and says, oh, you never want to, you never want to go solar. That thing's a scam, right? You're not going to be able to address that objection. You're going to be on your heels. And that's when you have customers who cancel, avoid cancellations, avoid awkward conversations where you're on your heels, trying to overcome objections by preventing them from occurring in the first place. So here's what happens. It's a fork in the road. I'm super excited to share the next step with you. What we'll need to do is we'll need to schedule an appointment to go over the, um, the presentation. I'm going to show you what the design's going to look like. I'm going to show you exactly where the system um, is going to go. I'm going to show you exactly how much power the system is going to replace in comparison with what you were purchasing last year, which will help you understand the financial benefits. Most of my customers find this super informative and very beneficial. We're going to need to be on a call together where I can share my computer screen. You need to have good internet access, but you'll actually need to be on a device that's large enough so that you can see my screen and I can share that with you. Now, I'd love to set this up so that anybody who has an interest in understanding what this is gonna do for your home, what the design is gonna look like, what the financial benefits with, uh, will be, are all involved when we talk about this together. In the end, it's gonna be a clear choice for you on whether or not this is gonna work for your family. Um, when can we get everybody together? And so that's option number one. Option number one is you reschedule, you have another appointment, you try to make it compelling enough that you get them to show up for that other appointment. Or option number two for the fork in the road is you continue to go through this process, right? You just continue to run through everything that you've already been running through with the customer. Now, the way that the loan works um, is pretty simple in structure. Um, I'm not going to go into a whole bunch of detail about this today. The way that you use our loan calculator to describe the payments and payment methodology for how that structure works, I won't go into a whole bunch of detail on that today. Just know that you've got tools and resources available to you so that you're going to be able to have really powerful conversations with your customers to get them to the next steps. And the application process itself, it's super simple and streamlined. Step one, you're going to send a URL link using the chat window, just like we've been doing today if you're using Zoom or any other one of the screen sharing technologies that we talked about earlier. You send that link to them. You stay on the line with them. The borrower completes the online application. You're going to be there with them to make sure that if they have any questions, those questions are answered. Once they get approved, they can simply request to e-sign the loan documents. It keeps everything completely simple for the borrower and the borrower experience itself is top notch. We're going to keep you supported and informed along the way by uh, making sure that there's never an email that your customer gets that you don't. So your operations team, sales professionals, and the borrower are all going to be informed in the same way. We've got a dedicated sales and support line with a team I'm super proud of here at Loan Pal to help you if there are questions that come up and you need an immediate answer. We've got a very wide um, operation hour. We have very wide operation hours and we have real professionals on the phones manning them to help you get your job move forward. And then the system itself that Loan Pal has is going to generate emails to let you know about the loan on its journey through the process. And if there anything, if there's anything else that comes up that we need from you or we need from the homeowner, we keep you informed with those same automated processes. Mm -hmm. Thanks for listening. Thanks for experiencing this with me. Thanks for coming on and investing in yourself. I really, really am super grateful. But now it's time for me to go and it's time for my colleague to come in and explain to you a little bit how the direct pay program works so that if you're interested in the direct pay program, you have everything that you need to start using it. Leandra. Thanks, Chris. You're a tough act to follow. Um, one thing that I'll ask if, if you could be my Vanna White in uh, changing the slide deck for me. Happy to uh, be your Vanna. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Leandra Rigos. Um, I'm the Director of Business Development and Home Improvement. Um, I'm, I'm not one of the folks that was a solar sales professional for the past 10 years, though. I do have a vast experience in the home improvement industry and over four years in the financing space in relation to home improvement. Also, um, 
I'm at the helm of this direct pay uh, program. I helped, I helped run and organize another direct pay uh, type program with a distributor who shall not be named. Um, but very happy to announce our partnership with Solagent. Um, LoanPal was originally structured to work with the high volume installer and we really wanted to find a way to work with um, the folks that are growing right now that haven't hit the milestones where they're, you know, actively doing about 30 plus installs a month. So what we've created was this direct pay program that basically facilitates um, getting your invoice paid directly um, through the LoanPal program. Um, and what that does and why this is important, um, especially right now with the current pandemic and things sort of slowing down and, and people getting a little wary of spending their money, um, it, re it opens up your credit lines and it's, it's really a way to uh, utilize um, uh, sort of like a working capital and, and you're not um, expending your cash flow basically in order to purchase equipment. So um, everything is, is still in working order as far as the Loan Pal um, financing program goes. Everything's normal on the sales side. The only difference is, is that Loan Pal will go ahead and pay your, your purchase order on your behalf once the install's been completed. Um, accounting really likes this. It's a win-win for everyone involved. Um, and it, it really allows you to have that, that working capital um, for your cash customers. Next slide, please, CK. So um, we, we can uh, finance residential solar systems. We can also do battery and storage systems. We just recently launched a battery retrofit financing option, um, which uh, we have a 10 year um, for that option. And then we are having a home improvement uh, platform coming soon. That's actually what, one of the reasons why I was brought on. We're hoping to launch that this fall. So if that's services that you provide as well as installing solar, um, that will be available to you uh, later this year. Um, if you can see on the right hand side of the screen, um, we have various loan tenors, a uh, seven year through 20 year. Um, if you have specific questions about rates in general, happy to jump on the phone with you. Um, me and Alex can, and can connect with you and, and go over these in, in, in more detail. Next slide, TK. So one of the unique things about Loan Pal is, is how we underwrite. And, and what makes us different, uh, different to our competitors is, um, is our underwriting guidelines. So most, um, if you've worked with other lenders in the past, you're familiar with they either pull all three FICO scores and do a blended average rate, or they only pull one FICO score. The difference with us is that we actually use the highest score of all three, and we'll buy down to a 650. Um, and because of the way we do this, it actually leads to higher approval rates, which leads to more conversions for you guys. So this, this essentially um, will increase um, your loan approvals between 15 to 30%. Um, so we have, we have two FICO bands in reference to approval amounts. Um, anyone that has a FICO score between a 650 to 699 will receive an approval of up to 50,000 and anyone above 700 will receive an approval up to 100,000. We also allow for co-borrowers and there's really no stringent stipulations around the co-borrowers either. And that's, that's another unique, unique thing that LoanPal does. Um, it can literally be anyone that the main borrower knows. Um, so they do, do not have to occupy the home um, they do not need to be on the title and they do not need to be blood related. Next slide, CK. Um, so to, to go ahead and start the application process, Alex will go ahead and um, provide some information here towards the end of the webinar. But minimum requirements to get an application in the door is that there, there needs to be a minimum of 100 installations over company lifetime. So since, um, since the business has been up and running, 100 installs need to be completed and also a year in business. Um, once we've gone over that, we can send out an application 
And some of the things that we look for along with the normal documentation as far as general liability and your contractor's license and so on and so forth is we're looking for satisfac satisfactory business credit. We are looking for an online reputation as well. Um, just real quick, uh, Facebook, Twitter, um, LinkedIn, those are things that our underwriting department don't really factor in too much. We like to see Google Yelp reviews. Um, as well as a presence with the BBB. Now, I just want to stress that you guys do not have to be accredited with the BBB, just have a presence there. Um, a few things we ask for too, is we want to take a look at, at the copy of your cash contract that you're providing to the customer and just make sure that it, it has all the criteria that we want to see. So, um, we, we ask to see the two copies of the customer's three-day right to cancel, um, and we also like to look um, for the contractor's license number, um, your workmanship warranty, so on and so forth. We also wanna see your proposal that you're sending to your customer to make sure that it has the compliant tax credit language, um, that you're capping your utility inflation rate escalator at 4%, and that you spell out the 18 month reamortization um, language as well. And you know, if, if that's something that you guys aren't currently utilizing or, or putting into your, your documentation, I'm more than happy to give you examples in reference to that. Next slide, please. So how to get paid via the direct pay program. So like I said, really nothing changes on the sales process in. It's basically once you're receiving your notice to proceed and you're gonna go ahead and um, reach out to your distributor, Solagent, um, to place your request for materials. Um, they would basically provide you with a bill of materials or invoice um, that you would upload into Loan Pals portal. Um, and Solagent has a, a version of the portal as well where they can go in and see this. Um, basically what you would do is you would enter in the total amount of the bill of materials. Um, as you can see here on the screen, um, there's an option to enter in, and the example is 8,000. You would hit calculate. We have a payment summary that lines out, itemizes everything that's gonna be deducted, and the net amount that you would receive once the job's been completed. Once we get you onboarded and approved and everything, obviously we'll go through this training, which Solagent will be involved in as well. Um, but it's, it's very simple. It's just one extra step to the normal process and it's very seamless. Next slide, please. Oh, thank you. Well, so um, that's, that's it for direct pay. Um, I'm gonna hand it over to Adrienne here. She's our director of marketing. Again, um, Alex it was, is going to provide some information on how, how to start the direct pay process. If you guys are interested, he'll give you my information as well. Very happy to talk to any one of you. Really looking forward to speaking to some of you later. Awesome. Thanks so much, Leandra. Uh, and thank you to everyone that's attending um, and learning about virtual sales. I wanted to just take a quick moment to talk about the Give Power program that we have. Um, so Give Power is a nonprofit that we are affiliated with, and Give Power's mission is to bring clean drinking water, clean energy to the developing world. So something that we do is um, build desalination plants, uh, build uh, water purification centers, and everything is powered by solar. And so um, if you have any goals around getting involved from a corporate responsibility perspective, um, it would be great to connect with our Give Power team um, to see about being a Give Partner. And basically, uh, what, what that program does is for every Loan Pal deal um, that you submit, you can, can contribute $20 um, to Give Power. And, um, and help power these different systems that we have. You can go to the next slide, CK. Um, so a couple places that we have uh, brought these systems to are Standing Rock domestically, but we've also partnered with the World Wildlife Foundation uh, to bring solar and water purification to um, world wildlife sites, rhino sanctuaries, um, as well as different places around the world. I know CK went on a trip to Colombia earlier this year. Last year I went to Nepal um, where we did an install um, near Dungogeti. And so these are really amazing 
um, projects and we often take our solar installer partners with us. So, um, and you can go to the next slide. So just in our last um, minute here, I wanna kick it um, back over to CK to kind of wrap it up. Um, yeah, go for it, CK. Thank you. Um, I appreciate you very much. The Give Power program is near and dear to my heart as well. Um, just think about it, team. You're doing something that's super beneficial here locally in your local communities by helping people upgrade their home to solar power, power they have to get, electricity they have to buy anyway. They just get it in a substantially better way and it helps eliminate some of the carbon footprint um, in their neighborhood locally. But there's ripple effects that are felt internationally based on the organization um, Give Power, who's able to provide clean water and light to people who otherwise wouldn't aff be afforded the opportunity to have those things that we take for granted. Um, so just know that it's part of doing business with Lone Pal is you're supporting not only the local efforts, but the in efforts internationally as well. So one of the things to expect when you're working with us is we're not your typical financer. We like to dig in with our partners and really understand their business. We review financials and basically provide consulting services that normally partners would have to pay thousands and thousands of dollars for as a benefit of being a Lone Pal partner. Part of that process is um, making sure that we help the business to grow. We understand the direction that it wants to grow. We help you sell more. Uh, and the other thing that we want to do is we, we always want to keep the KISS uh, philosophy in mind. We want to keep the process simple. We want to make it simple for you to integrate with us. We want to keep documentation minimal. We want to keep our interactions with your customers to a really soft and non-offensive minimal point. Um, up until the point when they officially become our customers. So I, I'm going to issue a challenge right now. I'm gonna, the challenge I'm going to issue um, is, is super fun. So I am not a social media person, but recently have been encouraged to get on social media and I've started it. And I got to tell you, I hear what all the kids are talking about. Some of the stuff is super fun. It's also kind of addictive. I want you to go and celebrate your successes. Celebrate what you're doing with your installer partners if you're one of the Sologen uh, business development professional. If you're a, a, a professional who's an installer, it, go and celebrate the successes that you have with your individual customers. Send a screenshot of your video conference, um, post it on Instagram, post it on Facebook, on GroupMe, LinkedIn, Twitter, Snapchat, whatever your preferred brand of social media is. Give us a hashtag or tag us in there and we'll respond back and like it for you. The more posts we see at, with at Lone Pal, at Soligent tagged in there, the more we'll know that these are absolutely a wonderful um, part of the process in the solar sales experience. Thank you so much team for spending the time with me today. I think we're right on the nose. Enjoy the rest of your week and weekend and give us some feedback about what we can do to help you in your specific situation by connecting with your Soligent professionals. Thanks team.